What up, what up? Welcome back to the HSD Nation, baby, where we talk trucking news, trends, driver spotlights. We're going to do it all today. We're going to talk about bow, bow, personal conveyance. Now, I'm going to have probably 30, 30 comments saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, hot shot, you're wrong. Read the text. Okay, let's start it off. This is, this is so damn simple, we got to complicate it. On both sides. Personal conveyance is the movement of a commercial motor vehicle for personal use while off-duty. A driver may record time operating a CMV for personal conveyance. As off-duty only when the driver is relieved from work and all responsibilities for performing work by the motor carrier. That's a tricky sentence, and I'll explain it in a minute. The CMV may be used for personal conveyance even if it is laden. That's what screwed it up. When they allowed you to be loaded, DOT took that shit personal. Since the load is not being transported for the commercial benefit of the motor carrier at the same time, personal conveyance does not reduce a driver's or motor carriers' responsibility to operate a CMB safely. Motor carriers can establish personal conveyance limitations either within the scope of or more restrictive than the guidance provided. Here's the problem. It says it right there. You can do whatever you want to do when you're off work. When you are relieved of work duties, you can do what you want, right? Correct. But. What is the first thing you are required to do to move that vehicle? An inspection. Can you do an off-duty inspection? Yeah? No? Like, what? what is that, off-duty time? And then if something's wrong, I say, yeah, i seen it, and I'm going to get it fixed. They're going to say, you're not on duty. You're going to say, well, I, I seen it last night. You know, that's the kind of stuff that shouldn't have to happen, but it does. Okay? FMCSA, the DOT officers, the trained DOT officers are the issue. They look at you as a product owned to the trucking company. They don't believe that you have the balls or the right or ability to enjoy your time off. When I take this truck home and I park it next to the house, God only knows what we can do. I might get on a motorcycle ride in circles. Maybe I want to do that in my truck. Maybe I want to take the big rig up and down, up and down the road, or maybe I want to take it to a show. Maybe, whatever the hell I want to do. But you're telling me when I'm over the road... I don't have those same those same privileges or rights as a human. You ask any DOT officer, they're going to say if it's further than interstate commerce, which I ain't heard shit about further than interstate commerce. If I run out of time right here in, let's say I'm 100 miles out of Vegas, I am allowed to deadhead PC to Vegas because I'm going to park the damn truck and I'm done. Like, it's my transportation. But if you do that, they will shut you down. And that's the biggest problem is they have the power to shut you down. And they will. And they answer to nobody. Dude, I've proved DOT wrong so many times and it doesn't matter. So, keep, like, we're going to keep riding. Keep, we're going to keep looking. Under what circumstances may a driver operate a commercial motor vehicle, CMB, as a personal conveyance? A driver... Guidance. This is the guidance from FMCSA themselves. A driver may record time operating a CMV for personal conveyance, i.e., for personal use or reasons. As off-duty only when the driver is relieved from work and all responsibility 
performing work by the motor carrier. Okay? So, if I'm on a reset, then I am off work duty. Like, I'm off duty. It is illegal for the company to make me work after I'm out of hours. Per FMCSA. So, how is FMCSA not going to use that same rule to say when I can and can't do what I want? If you're on a reset, personal conveyance. Doesn't matter which way you go, which circles you go, upside down, whether you do it first, don't matter. You legally cannot drive a truck to further interstate commerce. You can't. So use that same deadline, same rule, same law as when I can PC. At least make it easier and give the drivers a life. Take out, don't, you don't need to do all that shit during the week. Give them something. Give them drivers something. You wonder why the mental health is so bad. Why they get all kinds of crazy, like, I'm not even going to go into all the health issues, all the the diseases, the mental issues, man. It is, it is disgusting. The mental issues that are in trucking. And the companies don't care. FMCSA don't care. Together they've created the monster. They are locking. I, I know we do it by choice. We're truckers. But back in the day, you used to be able to enjoy your life. Fourth generation trucker, right? And it got so bad. Four generations and gone. I'm not man enough. I'll take that shit. But if I told my old man this, he's not. This shit didn't happen back in the day. Back in the day, you want to drive to the titty club, you drive to the damn titty club. You want to go see Chippendales, you can go see Chippendales. They were humans back then. That's why they want robots. Because they don't give a shit about you. And it gets rid of the liability. So, sorry. Yeah, I get a little fired up on the trucking. So, you're off duty, all responsibilities. The CMV, CMV may be used for personal conveyance, even if it's laden. Since the load is not being transported for the commercial benefit of the carrier at the time okay whether it goes with me or not whether it makes it a couple feet or a couple miles closer that is not the determination it is not and that's what fmcsa officers try to tell you oh if you're driving 20 feet you drive 20 miles you got to go back and restart show me show me Right? They, they don't want to change with the times. It's another extortion tactic by the FMCSA. And it doesn't, it doesn't reduce your responsibility to operate a CMV. They pretty much told them the same thing is up there. Let's hear some examples. This is from the FMCSA, not from Hotshot Dave. Time spent traveling from a driver's in-route lodging, such as a motel or truck stop, to restaurants and entertaining fa- entertainment facilities. So if I'm at the truck stop, and I want to go to the track, I can take this truck, park it at the track, and go to the track. I don't need to go back. It says, from a driver's end route. It doesn't say, on the driver's way. So I can drive from my end route and go to where I want to go for my time. My time. The driver's time. We asked for a simple 34 hours of my time and now you want to tell me when and how I can take it. Alright. Commuting between the driver's terminal and his or her residence. Between trailer, drop lots, and the driver. Well, that example of pro that's what the cool commuting between the driver's terminal and his or her residence between trailer drop lots and the driver's residence. 
and between work sites or his or her residence. In these scenarios, the commuting distance combined with the release from work and start to work times must allow the driver enough time to obtain the required restorative rest as to ensure the driver is not fatigued. So, they can drive it, but that starts at 34 or the 10, right? You can't drive five and not take ten off. Like you, well, you, I, you know what I mean. Time spent traveling to a nearby reasonable safe location to a, a blah, blah, safe location to obtain required rest after loading or unloading. That time driving under personal conveyance must allow the driver adequate time to obtain the required rest in accordance with minimum. Off-duty periods under 49 CFR 395.3. A1, property carrying vehicles. Uh, before returning to on-duty. So, and the resting location must be the first such location reasonably available. Right. So, if I unload and I want to go to the closest hotel... Because I don't want to be in my sleeper, I can, as long as a 34-hour restarts after. And if we're being honest here, once you do a 34-hour reset, DOT legally is not allowed to shut you down for a violation the previous week. Because you've already reset your hours and you are no longer in violation. Even though there was a violation... If you go back further than, if you give them back further than seven days and they find a violation, they cannot, they can't do nothing. If you have reset your 34, you you can't, you, you will, don't get it twisted, you will reset, you will stop, but legally you shouldn't have to. Because when that, when that officer says, you're out of service. We going to say, no, I'm not, and drive away? No, you're going to. But this is why we need data queue. This is why you need to ask for that ticket. FMCSA will not give you a ticket because you can't challenge it the right way. You can data queue it, but it's all up to what they say. I've been successful with data queues also. So... You can drive to a hotel, motel. You can't drive past 20 of them, but you can drive past one. Um, Now, I don't know. Let's say there's comfort in, days in, quality in, but you want to go to a a Hilton. You know what I mean? Because you're a big big bougie driver. You need to Hilton. I don't know if that's legal. But what was next? Moving a CMB at the request of a safety official during the driver's off-duty time. So he says, yo, you need to move. You go PC to move. Problem is, they're going to hit you with violations and all that. Like, if you ask them, they're not, well, they'll tell you they're out there for public safety. They're out there for extortion and racket. And if it wasn't extortion, it wasn't a racket, it would be illegal for them to take your equipment and make you pay on the spot. Pennsylvania, there's towns that you have to pay on the spot. If you've been around, you know I had a $10,000 fine had to be paid on the spot. Or, or I could plead guilty and pay 5 G's and get my truck back. And the officer told me that. Extortion. Still fighting that BS. Um... Time spent traveling in a motor coach without passengers to in route lodging such as motel or truck stop or to restaurants and entertainment facilities and back to the lodging. Now that you gotta go back to the lodging for stuff like that. The driver of the motor coach can claim personal conveyance provided the driver is off duty. Other off duty drivers may be on board the vehicle. And are not considered passengers. 
that one gets a little confusing. But I was not a passenger carrier, so I, I honestly don't know. Um, time spent transporting personal property while off duty. Authorized use of the CMV to travel home after working at an off-site location. Hear me out. Authorized use of a CMV to travel home if they're working at an off-site location. So you tell me how, just how, DOT can put you out of service for that. But they will. If you drive home, you do your 34-hour reset, and you get caught three days with that, they will put you out of service. Illegal as hell. They'll put you out of service. All right. Examples of uses of a CMV that would not qualify as personal conveyance. All right. The movement of a CMV in order to enhance the operational readiness of a motor carrier. For example, bypassing available resting locations in order to get closer to the next loading or unloading point or other scheduled motor carrier destinations. That's where a problem lies also. Because I say I'm driving to get to this hotel. Mr. D.O.T. says, no, you're driving to get closer to the load. Who's right? Who's wrong? He can tell me what I'm thinking and do what he wants. That's the problem. There should there is no like since when do laws become interpretational? And everything in trucking is interpretational. However, that officer interpretizes this is how you get it. How you interpret it? After delivering a towed unit and the towing unit no longer meets the definition of a CMV. So you can't deliver an RV and deadhead back. Common sense, right? Continuation of a CMV trip in interstate commerce in order to fulfill a business purpose, including bobtailing or operating with an empty trailer in order to retrieve another load or reposition a CMV tractor or trailer at the direction of the motor carrier. But who's to say what I'm doing? That's the issue. Because in the top one, you can take the top examples, match them with the bottom in one. It's the issue. It's in black and white and people interpret and say it's wrong. Black and white. Time spent driving a passenger carry CMB while passengers are on board. Now remember, off-duty drivers are not on board or not considered passengers. Uh, but like I said, I don't know much about that. Time spent transporting a CMV to a facility to have vehicle maintenance performed. I understand that. that like I get that. If they're being placed out of service for exceeding the ma- exceeding the maximum permitted maximum periods permitted under Part 395, time spent driving to a location to obtain required rest, unless so directed by an enforced officer at the scene. Time spent traveling to a motor carrier's terminal after loading or unloading from a shipper or a receiver. Time spent operating a motor coach while luggage is stowed. Now, this was 2019 when this was done. Nothing's changed since 2019. Except for this being the most... This is the biggest violation. And you tell me why. Why hasn't it been looked at in five, four years? Four. We'll give it five next year. We're in 2023. This is 2019. Why has this problem not been fixed, FMCSA? Why can't we get some real guidance? Why can't we get some real time periods? Like, can you help us out? 
The truck drivers just want to be human. We, we, it's They are locked in a cage. Sent cross country. All they ask for is a couple hours to enjoy themselves. Couple hours to enjoy themselves. That's it. Is it too much to ask? Now, you guys tell me, you guys drivers, non-drivers, you heard what I read, you heard what I read. You see how they both can be... They can say, oh, no, you were doing this. They're going to say, no, I was doing that. They're going to say, nope, you're a trucker, you're a liar. That's what they're going to tell you. And they're going to put you out of service. So, guys, be careful.